Okay, so I assert that Mark Twain and Charles Dickens, two realists, make their stories essentially more real or impactful for the reader by employing both realistic and unrealistic elements in their stories. This third party, um, this third hybrid party that they inhabit is more appealing to readers who then want to become engaged in the story, and as they do, they find that the story changes them. Briefly, the paper that this is based on um, that I wrote discusses that realism, or the endeavor to make art reflect reality, can be seen transatlantically. First in America, with our southern favorite Mark Twain in his short story, The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County. I'm sure you've never heard of it. The tale of Jim Smiley um, in his short story, um, I'm sorry, the tale of Jim Smiley, the boyish bet king of the county. Uh, he hilariously loses a bet with a stranger, claiming that his frog, Daniel Webster, can outjump any frog in the county, and second with Charles Dickens in his Yuletide classic, A Christmas Carol. However, these two realist authors achieve the same goals as conventional realism, i.e. making the reader feel and igniting social change, but they do it by breaking from realism. So in what ways do they diverge, and how can these changes achieve the same ends? What I believe can be said for both Twain and Dickens' work is that they infuse unrealistic or fantastical elements into their realism to morph a hybrid third party that wedges itself between the two, the real um, and the unreal, as pictured here on the slide. The wedge widens the space between realism, which is sometimes too stark or shocking, and unrealism, which is sometimes too unbelievable. It is this space, in this space created that the mind of the reader is able to enter and engage. In A Christmas Carol, uh, the humor, the wonder, and the kinder demonstration of social problems encourage the reader to want to be involved. In Jumping Frog, the humor, again, as well as the ambiguity infused in the story's clever structure, allow the reader to be an agent in the story. Once we are agents in the stories by invitation, by structural ambiguity, or by sheer desire, we are as readers taught to feel in the end, but it is because we're able to experience the thing ourselves rather than be told how we must feel. Um, while according to George Eliot, falsification of what is real is pernicious, Twain and Dickens both seem to understand the value in allowing the reader some choice in the matter, and that real power accompanies that choice. So what are the implications? Well, we as readers must realize that we can take part in what we read, and that we must decide when, how, and why to enter a story. We must all be deliberate readers. After all, we don't simply read a book. If done right, and often helped along by masters like Dickens and Twain, we become true partakers in the literature experience to engage in the reading process. You not only become an agent in the narrative or story, but you have taken the reins on who it is you want to become. Thank you.